if you don't mind. There are two reasons why we got involved with 16001 and the kite mark, and I'm going to demonstrate them now, if you'll just indulge me. Please. between EN16001 and the actual verification kite mark. On your left hand side is the, the certification for 16001. It's a methodology for creating a management system using plan, implement, check and correct. It uses energy factors to smooth out business demands in a, in a similar format to 9001 and 14001. On your right hand side is the kite mark and that's an external audit where somebody comes in audits your business to verify that you've actually saved the money that you set out to do. In the first year we saved 22% of our energy bill and in the second year a further 14.6%. The, year, the, the, the uh, year is over a two year compliance year and the only thing you've got to comply with is a 2.5% reduction, which is really a joke. So why did we do this? Well, 60,001 is the only standard that actually addresses cost. It's the only standard that actually addresses saving money. It's of huge importance to budget holders in the, both the private and public sector, right across the spectrum. And I think the penny has dropped by now that Actually, if you save energy, you're going to save a lot of CO2. It's, for energy-intensive organisations, it can be the new profit. Even trade unions are seen as potential, and the impact on their members can have on it. So its primary goal is to save money. So why do we get involved with it? Well, we actually make low-energy air filters. And that impacts upon the heating, ventilating, air conditioning part of of buildings. HVAC, heating, ventilating, air conditioning, accounts for 70% of a building's energy costs. Air filters are an integral part of that, of the energy consumption associated with HVAC. We believe we can save property owners in the London area alone £300 million just by changing to low energy air filters from conventional ones. It generally means there's no capital costs and the costs are recovered in literally months and paid for out of revenue budget. So that's the reason why we got involved with it. We make low energy air filters. In summary, we practice what we preach. We need to demonstrate to our customers that we can actually behave in the same way as we would like them to behave. It works for everybody, it's good fun. We engage all our, our employees, shareholders, employees, everybody associated with the business gains with this. A little bit about Camphill. We're a World War organisation. Uh, the numbers are on the board there. We, we, we turn over £420 million, 24 production centres and R&D centres across the world, and we've got 3,300 employees. We, our core action in business is, is to uh, manufacture air filters and conserve energy. We're in all areas where you find a fan is moving air. In the UK, this is the, the business that I run, it's just north of Manchester, we have a site there that is actually, um, we turn over 20 million pounds, we have 160,000 square foot production plant with just about 200 employees and we have an energy bill of 500,000 pounds. In the first year we saved 
22%, I'll repeat that, 22%, about £120,000. And in the second year, a further 80. So we managed to reduce our energy bill from £500,000 to £300,000. So you want to ask the question, how do we do it? Well, we all know that there's money to be saved, I think. In our heart of hearts, we all know there's money to, to be saved. It's our duty to be responsible for the world's resources. Can you look your grandchildren in the eyes and say you did nothing? With a few immediate improvements, we're effectively banking the money straight away. Doing nothing is not acceptable. Just to expand upon that, how do you do it again? Well, in year one, which will be our 2008, I guess, um, we had a principle where we, we, would, we would assess least effort, biggest reward, looking for low investment, high savings, Typical things would be lighting, air filters, things like that. We actually, we actually embarked upon an employee programme called CEASE, Council Energy Awareness Saves Environment, and that effectively galvanised our whole workforce. We listened to our people, we implemented their ideas, we used local resources like Groundwork, Resource Efficiency Club, NWorks, and of course BSI. We measured and monitored everything, so we can actually physically understand our energy bills first. In year two, we got more heavily involved with the BSI, and we, we immediately put a basic energy management system in place, i.e. procedures for measuring and monitoring what we actually consume. We formalised the energy management system under BS 16001, including the formal aspects review and identification of low energy factors. Factors are things like degree days for the temperature outside, production usages for energy usages for production throughput, occupancy for lighting, things like that. We got the 16,001 in July of this year. It took us about six months from the first um, initial uh, embarking upon that. And we got the car mark um, in July. So we actually proved we could practice what we preach. So in summary, in summary we looked at the low investment versus high savings. We looked at all the different areas, we listened to our people, we called it something, we shared the savings with our employees. They all get a piece of the action as well. Um, we use local resource, we involve BSI, we formalise a system, we're in aspects review, energy factors, we got an audit and got a certificate. It wasn't that difficult. So what do we save? 22% overall, there were some of the areas where we saved the money. We saved 90% on fuel, uh, we saved on water, and we saved on waste 8%. And in the second year, we saved a further 8% on energy and a further 10% on fuel. 